This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. To each and every one of you, my father's children, I greet you with the joy that I believe simply comes from knowing Jesus. I believe that because Jesus is the center of my joy, the center of my entire being, I believe that when you follow him, things just get more exciting and like welcome to historic Trinity African Methodist Episcopal Church located here at the heart of Manning, South Carolina. Here at Trinity, we believe that God is our Father, Christ is still in the redemption business, and the Holy Ghost can do something about our situation. Our prayer that you would connect with our family so we might become a part of yours. Welcome to worship on this last Sunday in September. We are grateful for what God is doing and pray that through the move of God and today's message, you and your whole family might be blessed. I'm going to invite you, if you're listening, to share this video on your Facebook page. Share this video on your Instagram page. Send this as a link to someone in your family if you're watching on YouTube. We want to get the message of the gospel out to let people know that even in a dying world, even in a world where there's COVID-19, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That is why we continue at Trinity to walk by faith and not by sight. As always, the stewards are here every Sunday from three to five for members or others in the community who just want to drop off their gifts of love and offering to help support the mission and ministry of the church. As we prepare for the Central Conference, that gathering body for the AMU Church in the surrounding areas, we're asking that the members of Trinity would dig deep and continue to help us by giving generously to support the work and ministry that we're seeking to do. We are only as good as our weakest link and we need everyone participating to work to help us get accomplished that what we, which we need to do. And so without any further ado, welcome so much to this worship broadcast. And we're praying that God has a message just for you. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to invite you right where you are, whether on your smartphone, your tablets, perhaps your desktop, or if you have the hardback Bible, softback, the leather edition, to join with me by turning to Exodus chapter number 17. Exodus chapter number 17, reading verses 1 through 7. Exodus 17, reading verses 1 through 7. I'll be reading from the New International Version, which is our tradition here at Trinity. Your version might be slightly different. However, as long as it lifts up the name of Jesus, it is all right with me. Exodus chapter number 17, commencing at verse number 1. Exodus 17, commencing at verse number 1, concluding at verse number 7, is our pericope. Pericope to God. Text for some my thoughts. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Exodus 17, verses 1 through 7. And it reads thusly. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to sow me. The Lord answered Moses, Go in front of the people and take some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders and he called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us not? Amen. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the good news of our gospel is that the word of our God shall stand forever. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Let us pray. Hide me now, O God, behind Calvary's old rugged cross. Let the people not see the mess that is dominant grief. 
but glorify the God that was crucified in Christ Jesus. High and lifted up with your train filled with temple. God, I'm trusting you for preaching. I've seen you work in others. Now, God, I'm asking that you might work in me. Do it again. And God will be ever so careful and ever so mindful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name. And the church of the living God said, Amen. Amen. For a brief while, I'm going to use it as a talk, topic, a quarrelsome tribe. A quarrelsome tribe. Whatever you do, please don't close your Bibles. My father's children, Exodus chapter number 17, invites us into the life of the children of God, where we have witnessed them be delivered out of the bondage and captivity of slavery at the hands of the Egyptian by a God who had shown himself mighty and strong through signs and wonders that he had wrought on the land of Egypt. God has brought this people in the text, the Bible calls them the children of Israel, to a place through many dangers, toils, and snares that in spite of keeping them from both the dangers that they could see and those that they could not see, despite allowing them to be baptized by the waters that would destroy other people and wipe out an entire Egyptian army, but would allow that to be the means of their deliverance. In spite of all that God had done in their lifetime, not 20 or 30 years ago, but rather a few days and weeks ago, I, I, I come to this place to simply say, I believe that you and me and some of us have the same problem that the children of Israel have in the book of Exodus. And it's simply, we are a forgetful people. Preach, Dominique, great. Trying the best I can. And so what happens is, because we forget who God is, and we forget what God has done, we find ourselves the moment that trouble comes our way, instead of being able to tell our problems to our God and tell our God, we're telling our God all about our problems. See, my father's children, this is a conundrum and a situation that is not unique to the Israelites in Exodus chapter 17. It's not unique to a circumstance that you will find throughout the biblical witness. It's not even unique to you and your cousins and your sister's relationship. Rather, it's something, my father's children, that happens time and time again. Why? Because people are fickle. And what happens is when you deal with some fickle people that have a sometime kind of memory, sometimes they remember and sometimes they don't. Mama called it selective amnesia. Grandma called it, oh, I got the I forget. Whatever it is you want to say about it, because you cannot remember who God is in certain crisis situations, instead of trusting in God, instead of walking by faith and not by sight, instead of not leaning on your own understanding, but in all your ways, and not instead of doing all those things the Word invites us to do, you do what you and I normally do, which is we begin to fear, doubt, and grumble. And God is saying, I've had enough of your grumbling. Good news, I pray you didn't close the Bible. Please don't close. I, I'm emphasizing don't close your Bible today because one of the problems that we have, not just in church, but in life is we're leaving the Bible closed far too long. And my prayer is that if we just leave it open more, we might read half the stuff that's in the book. Please don't close the word. And so we're in the text and we find in the text that instead of trusting that he that began a good work in them would see it through, they begin to grumble, they begin to complain, they begin to doubt, and they find themselves in a place where instead of being grateful to a God who had brought them from a mighty, mighty long way, they're mad at the God who had put them on the precipice of their blessing and was upset that God wouldn't give it to them on their terms and God was making them have to wait. You ever had to wait on your blessings that you thought you deserved yesterday? You ever had to wait on that relationship? Wait on that promotion? Wait on that new job? 
wait for you to get your baby, wait for you to have that new boo, wait for you to get your car, recognize when you said you wanted to restore your credit, that it didn't get restored overnight, it took one or two years for you to stop paying stuff down. It is not all going to happen instantly. Some stuff only comes with time. Jesus and God in the text, my father's children, is fed up with their grumbling. He is fed up with them complaining about where they find themselves at in life. And notice what the people do. Good God Almighty. Instead of the people many times getting mad at the party responsible for where they are. Ooh, preach Dominique Great. Help somebody. Instead of being mad at God who put them there, they get mad at Moses because they don't have the courage to confront God themselves. And that's just like many of us. Someone else has done something to us or for us. We might not like what they've done. And instead of taking it out on the person and confronting them directly, we try to go through a go-between to mediate the relationship for us. Moses wasn't the one that saved him. God saved him and he just happened to use Moses. All right. All right. My father's children, we find ourselves in a world today where many of us, to God be the glory in these United States, have running water. Might have some lead in the pipe, might not be perfect depending on the city that we live in or the community where we find ourselves. But for the most part, we have running water. We're so blessed that many of us, in fact, even in the midst of virtual school, for the most part, many of us got internet. And I have it in Manning, South Carolina. But for the most part, most people in America got internet. We're so blessed that the truth be told, you might not be eating lobster and king crab on a regular, but at least you had grits and some egg at least two to three times. Some of us are really, really blessed. But when one thing happens that doesn't go the way that we believe it should have went, instead of saying, God, I've come to say thank you for giving me that which I didn't deserve and for keeping me through it all, we get mad. And I came out and say, yeah, we got to learn to let some stuff go. I know that COVID-19 in the world and COVID has kind of thrown stuff off. I know some of us don't want to wear masks because it gets on our nerves and affects our breathing. I know some of us are concerned about the flu and don't want to get flu shots because I know every time you get the flu shot, you get sick. I know there's some of us out here, perhaps under the sound of my voice, that don't want to do this and don't want to do that. And you over here talking about some, oh, I don't want to vote. Oh, my vote don't count. It ain't going to make a difference. Oh, they're going to pick whoever they're going to pick anyway. I came by to say, you can make all the excuses in the world, but it's not going to change nothing until you first change yourself. I'm tired of being in a place and in a position with people who are afraid to trust that God is still in control. Y'all, I promise you, I'm 30 years old. I don't have all the answers. promise you I don't know it all. But I promise you this. The same God of yesterday will be the same God of today and the same God of tomorrow. And if he was good to me on yesterday, I promise you he'll be good to me on tomorrow. And I, if he was good then and he was good now, I can only anticipate he'll be better than he's ever been before. My situation is not bigger than my God. My situation is not the ultimate determinant of where I will be and where I will end up in life. My current finances will not determine whether or not I'm going to see Jesus. What will determine whether or not I see Jesus is the condition in my heart, not what I did that got me in this place, but rather how I handle being in this place now that I'm there and the children of Israel give us an example of precisely what not to do that far too many of us stop grumbling. Man, that the church don't do what it should do or isn't more engaged in the community. You're not engaged in the community. Man, that the church ain't helping people more with benevolence. 
You know what I mean? Out in the church, the church with Netherlands. Mad at the church for not being engaged in voting. Girl, you ain't voted since Jimmy Carter was president. Mad at the church for not doing enough to support Black Lives Matter. You don't even care about your own child, which is why you don't pay child support. Stop getting on the church and start worshiping God for yourself. If you stop complaining about other people and start complaining and being and giving your petitions unto God, God will save you and me. I meant to text, I pray you didn't close your Bible. We, we, we're still in Exodus chapter number 17. And so they grumble and they complain to Moses. Notice now, God hears their grumbling. Don't think you can say stuff and just get away as if God don't hear you. Don't think you can say stuff and there will not be consequences and repercussions for your actions. Everything you do, come here Isaac Newton, for every reaction, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And so if you pray to God when your prayer is answered, don't be surprised. If you don't pray, but just keep telling your mama and your girl, then if it don't get changed, your mama and your girl cannot do for you what the Lord can do. And as they complained to Moses, at least Moses was holy about how he handled the issue. He takes it to God. And notice what God did. God is better than me. Y'all, I'm telling you, y'all better be grateful that I am not God, that Sister Walker ain't God, that your mama not God, that Rosa Montgomery ain't God, that Donald Trump ain't God. Well, if God would, if I had been God, I'd have told you, Lord, oh, you can shove it and you can take your drum and complain to somewhere else. God hears them and answers them in spite of their triflingness. And that's what God is doing for us. Many times, my father's children, God is blessing us in spite of our triflingness. Now, I use the word trifling, but for the holy church going saint, you might use the word sin. Whether you call it sin, whether you call it trifling, whether you call it no good, whether you call it immoral, whether you call it unethical, it's the same root problem. You're doing something that's not acceptable and pleasing in the eyes of God, and God has had enough, but through it all, he hears you. And God still answers their prayer. And I think this is a powerful story about the significance of who God is in relationship to who we are. When you start complaining to me, I tell you to go sit down. When I started complaining to my mama, my mama said, you and Stephen work it out for yourselves because you don't want me and the leather belt to get involved or you don't want me and to have to go to the tree or send you to the tree to get a switch in. I get the switch involved. Brother, but when you go to God, he solves every problem. He heals and he delivers and he gives them water. But my father's children, I don't want us to have to just keep going to God because we're trifling. I don't want us to have to keep going to God and asking God to bail us out. I don't want us to have to keep going to God because we're not doing right and we need God to do something for us. I want us to start getting it right for ourselves. And far too often, we're missing the mark and we're missing point and it's time out on stupid it's time out on complaining and time to get right will you get right today not because God cannot save you in your mess but get right today because in spite of God saving power you don't want to have to continually always be rescued. God gives you a lifeline where you can have to stop needing to be rescued and bailed out all the time. It's called Jesus. And all it requires is you take him at his word, grab him by the hand, allow him to come into your heart. And you don't have to worry about changing yourself. If you let God into your heart because you took his hand and took him at his word, God will change you. And the things you used to do, the places you used to want to go, the people you used to hang out with, God will solve all that for you. But you first 
got to be willing to let some stuff go. Y'all, we are in a jacked up place sometimes because of the action that we have taken. The good news of the gospel is no matter where we are, God is capable of getting us out. Amen.